Hey golf people, I'm heading out the door to play it again sports to pick up a used set of golf clubs. These aren't just any used set though. This is a set of the number one best-selling golf clubs of all time, the Ping I-2s. And when I saw these clubs actually had a blue dot and the blue dot signifies one degree upright. It reminded me of when I was a teenager, I went with my uncle out to Scottsdale, Arizona to Ping's factory and got custom fitted. Back in the day, there was no custom fitting. It wasn't a thing. This was really groundbreaking stuff and I got fitted for the blue dot. Being a kind of low income teenager at the time, I definitely did not have the money. So it was a really fabulous experience, but I didn't have a chance to actually buy them. Well, now I can. Now for a lot of people, the Ping I-2s is a likely candidate for first set. Everywhere you look, you can find a set of I-2s. These clubs are superfluous at your garage sales, your thrift stores, your secondhand used stores, eBay, that sort of thing. But, you know, I've swung them a few times and over the years I've had some friends that had sets of these things, but I've never actually really played around with them. So it'll be my first time. I'm kind of excited, I've got to say. There it is, played against sports next to my old friends at Edwin Watts. Unfortunately, Edwin Watts now gone. All right, I'm walking into the store here. I'm hoping they still have them. Please tell me they have them. Yes, they do. I'm grabbing them. Guys, I've got them. They were still here. The course is only five minute drive from here. Let's go play with them. There they are, guys. We have made it out to Carrollwood Country Club. I'm gonna play five holes of golf out here. So taking a good look at these clubs, as you can see, it's a very unique shape. This shape, all about promoting forgiveness. In terms of what they look like at address, you can see a pretty healthy offset there, guys. Top end, pretty thick, not the thickest, but a long, long way from the thinnest, I would say. And you don't really see the cavity here in this eight iron. And here is the four iron and you don't see the cavity there either. And that's because it's so offset. It really hides that cavity back there. All right, guys, stepping up to a par three here. We've got 135. I'm gonna take out the eight iron. Let's see what we can do with this thing. Guys, for a second there, I thought we had an ace. That ball must have run right next to the hole. I cannot believe it. The story I would have had to tell the members inside that I had my first hole in one, and they ask you, what was the distance? 135, what clubs you hit? Eight iron. They would have been scratching their heads. Guys, we've got a birdie putt, like a really good birdie putt. I've got to say, they feel considerably better than what I would have guessed. Now I'm gonna expect that we get the height I'm gonna expect that we're gonna lose a little distance, but I did not expect that the feel would be so good. This is a cast iron club, it's not a forged iron club. And while it doesn't feel like a Mizuno or something like that, it's not half bad. That shot, oh, I wish I had a camera up on the green so you could see it. But this is where I just ended up, guys. And I'm trying to find my pitch mark. I think it hit right in here. So it was just on this line and just barely missed going in. <laughs> that would have been something. With all those fancy clubs I use, that's gotta be one of my best birdie chances in probably two months, believe it or not. That was shocking. And even though I know I'm not gonna get the distance with these clubs, if I can control them like that and hit them like that, Boy, I'll take it. I felt like that was a good strike, but not a great strike either. All right, hardest hole on the course here. I'm actually gonna tee off with this four iron because I wanna hit as many shots as I can with these irons. And it'll probably be a three shot hole because this is a real long one. It always takes a real good drive and a real good second shot. So uh, let's see what we do. Boy, I gotta say real nice shot shape and the feel again, it feels really good, the sound excellent sound it's that classic sound that i miss from the 80s <laughs> you hardly find that sound anymore i think the closest ones might be the wilson d9s probably the whole line of wilson's to getting the right sound but you just don't hear it like that anymore all right here we are middle of the fairway i'm controlling these clubs pretty good so far as well we're definitely not getting the distance that was a four iron i hit 182 and I've got a little touch of wind behind me on top of that. So just by comparison, I think I hit the Cobra Forge Tex 198 this year, and I hit the Mizuno JPX 923s 
213 yards with a four iron. Now, of course, those clubs considerably stronger lofts for sure. But in terms of control, feel, sound, mm, loving what I see here. All right, now we've got a tough shot. It's very narrow because we've got water on the left, water up there on the right. So I've got to be really, really accurate with these things. We're 230 yards to the flag stick, so there's no way I can get there. So we're just gonna lay up here. I'm gonna hit like a 160 yard shot, which is probably gonna be about my six iron here. And that's about perfect. I actually carried it a little further than I want past the fairway over the cart path, but we are dry. 87.2 yards. I don't know exactly what this pitching wedge is at, but I bet it's about 48, 49 degrees, maybe even 50. Should be the right club one way or the other. Let's find out. Go a little bit. I think I flew it a little bit too far, but so far so good guys. I am on cloud nine with these things right now. Still an outside chance here at par. We've got 15 feet, actually wasn't so bad. I didn't get a lot of uh, checkup on that, but I was also downhill eye in the rough, so. We'll see how the grooves do on the next hole, but yeah, I don't mind this too much at all. That's a tricky putt because it's right on the crown of the green there. All right, so that was a bogey, but we're still even par after that first hole. Now this next hole is playing about 340 yards from the white tees. We're gonna stick with irons only here, so we'll go with that four iron off the tee. Now I hit that one slightly off the toe, but these clubs, absolutely very forgiving. That was always the claim to fame of these old Ping I-2s. Much more forgiving even than I think they deserve to be, quite honestly. I play with clubs nowadays and I can't say they're much more forgiving than these, and some are not as good. After that drive, we've actually got 152 into the hole. We got that wind behind us. I think we still gotta go with the seven iron there to get there with these. It's up there. I didn't think we'd have enough club there, but with that wind behind us, we got there, folks. Let's see how it did in terms of spin. I hit that, I hit that with a pretty good draw spin, which is normally gonna bounce the ball forward. And it didn't seem to quite get up in the air as high as I would have expected on that particular shot, even though I've seen the four iron get up really nice and high as well as that six iron we hit. Well guys, as expected, we ran just a little bit off this green. That was a back pin. And uh, hey, I'm excited about that distance though. Pretty darn good. Let's see how the Ping I2 wedge does here with this little chip. Not too shabby. Hit the right landing spot there, guys. Well, after three holes, we're even par. Who would have guessed it? I gotta say, I'm riding a high here. This is like cloud nine to play these clubs for $129. I am not disappointed in any way. The only thing I've gotta worry about here with these particular clubs, and this is for all of you used club buyers, the grips on this thing have seen better days. These grips are probably themselves, not the originals, but probably a good 10, who knows? I'd say at least 10 years old. So it's kind of hard to hang on to these clubs. You gotta have a good grip. When you buy used clubs, probably likely you wanna regrip them anyways. So just build that into the cost. Now the clubs are old, but these threads, they are brand new. It's from my friends over at Proud90. I've got a link down below. If you really wanna stand out on the golf course, there's no better way to do it. I like this little dog too. We've got 162 here. We've got a bunker right in front of the hole. I'm gonna actually hit a fade shot here just to test the workability of these clubs. And I'm gonna go six iron. Oh, that's big and high, and it's fading in there. Pretty nice. Well, guys, that got up nice and high in the air. It did carry the bunker, but we didn't quite make the green. We're about five yards short, so I probably hit that six iron, 62. I guess I hit it about 157. Here we are, just on the apron. In terms of workability, I'd say pretty good, not incredible. And again, that goes to how forgiving these clubs were again, well ahead of their time. So you can work them, but not anything like a blade or something that's forged or something like that. All right, let's see if we can nail another birdie putt here on a par three.
take the par. All right, we're gonna go to our last hole here. It's a par five. Again, we're gonna go irons only. If we can par this thing, we will have played five holes at level par. That would be something. That's the goal here. Let's try to do it. I think what's most crazy and wild about what I've seen here today with these clubs, and I never ever in a million years would have expected it, is just how accurate I have been. I don't think I've been more than like two degrees off in terms of where I want that ball to land. I don't know exactly how old these clubs are, but they're getting on three decades old. All right, that one, right after we said how accurate they were, I pulled one. I don't think it was the clubs, but it was the swinger there. We're a little left though, we're in the rough, but it's not gonna be too bad. And this is gonna be a three minimum, if not four shot hole. 567 from where I just teed off. All right, guys, well, it is going to be a challenge because I've just found my ball and I've got some serious tree trouble and a pretty poor lie in top of it. So we're gonna go four iron here and I'm just really trying to punch out and get this thing advanced. I tried to get too cute and I almost missed. <laughs> it's tough to judge a club by that shot, that's for sure. That's gonna make this par a really difficult one. I've gotta hit two amazing shots here to hit the green. Run, 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 run. That's when you hope the grooves are really worn down. These things, yeah, they're pretty worn down. Well, guys, I hit that one a long way. We are 145 out. With the adrenaline, I'm feeling like an eight iron, especially since these roll out so much. I think that's the play, honestly. I'm gonna go right up over this bunker. Wish me luck. We have to get up and down for a par. That would be something. Pulled it. I pulled it because I was really going after it. I'm just thrilled over the moon with how well these clubs actually perform down here on course. Never would have guessed I could play golf like this with what I've got. And just for the sake of nostalgia, I think I'll keep them. Pin high, I cannot believe it. In fact, I'm a couple yards past the pin. All right, moment of truth. We're gonna use that little wedge here and see if we can put this one in. If we do, I think I'll rip my shirt off and run off this golf course, guys. <laughs> guys, I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope it showed you that no matter what you've got in your bag, you can have so much fun out on a golf course. This was a day for me filled with exhilaration, pure joy, and a lot of exciting moments. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you back here very soon on another edition of Let's Play Through.